God is good and all the time. Amen, amen. Today, my message is entitled, Beware. Beware of the green snake under green grass. Hallelujah. I'm sure each and every one of us has ever heard of the phrase, snake under grass. And whenever we hear the phrase, snake under grass, we know of someone who is mischievous. We call somebody who is mischievous or dangerous, we call them, they are snake under grass. One day I was talking to a friend of mine and he was telling me, oh, oh no, 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 no. This friend of mine is worse than just a snake under grass. This friend is a green snake under green grass. And what that means really is that a snake under grass, if it's on the grass and the snake is brown, you can clearly see that that's a brown snake uh, crawling on the green grass. But what if the, uh, the uh, snake is green and that green snake is lying on the green grass? It means you won't even notice that the snake is there. It's camouflaged. Hallelujah. And so that phrase, snake under grass, have changed to green snake under green grass. Hallelujah. And, and, and that's a very popular phrase. We say somebody is a snake. And when we say someone is a snake, we mean that that person is dangerous. Amen. That person who is a snake is dangerous. Hallelujah. You know, and what is a snake? When we say somebody is a snake, what do we mean? According to the dictionary.com, a snake is a person who is untrustworthy. You can't trust a snake. If you have a friend who is untrustworthy, that person is a snake. Hallelujah. Then we have the, the Urban Dictionary. Urban Dictionary says that a snake is someone who looks or seems like a really nice person. But that person is actually a backstabber. And that person is waiting for an opportunity to strike. See, when a snake is lying there, a dangerous snake, green snake that is lying on the green grass, you, you wouldn't notice that it is there. And for all you know, whilst you're looking at the grass, it's green and everything is fine. You think everything is great. But that snake is waiting for that day or that moment where you will come too close and pow, strike and cause damage, cause an injury. And if we don't even take time, it might even lead to death. And brethren, there are some people in our lives who are snakes. So today's message is talking about the kind of friends we have. The kind of friends who will cause harm. The backstabbers. The snakes around us. So if you have a snake around you, brethren, today listen to the message. And I hope you will do what you have to do to eliminate that snake from around you. Because that snake is not going to do anything good in your life. That snake is going to create problems in your life. That snake might lead to death. Amen. So we read from first, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 18. Second Chronicles chapter 18. And in that book, we read about the story of King Ahab and King Jehoshaphat. Now King Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. And King Ahab was the king of Israel. Now, those two nations used to be one. And we'll talk about it. It's... Okay, so let me even talk about it now. Those two nations used to be one nation, used to be all Israel. And our history tells us that Israel was established and they are, the, the tribes came from the children of Jacob, right? And so Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So that's why we call him Israel. And the children, uh, uh, the, ten, the 12 tribes of Israel, as we call them, are actually the 11 sons of um Actually, the ten sons of um, uh, Jacob plus the two sons of Joseph. So when, when they, uh, Jacob was blessing his children, he blessed the ten. And then he didn't give any to, uh, he blessed the eleven. He didn't give any to Joseph. 
And then he blessed the two sons of Joseph. That's Ephraim and Manasseh. So those he recognized Ephraim and Manasseh as his children. So uh, the Israelites recognized uh, Manasseh as a tribe in Israel and Joseph as a, um, Ephraim as a tribe in Israel. So there is no tribe of jo Joseph. And then that makes them actually 13. But God selected the tribe of Levi and made them the, prof, uh, the priests. And so they have no inheritance. They have no tribe. Uh, they have no land in Israel. And so they were all uh, distributed amongst the, the, um, the 12 tribes. You know, So 10 plus the 2 makes the 12. The 13th child, which is uh, Levi, uh, was, was uh, given to all of them to take care of. Now, something happened when King David became king. He handed over to his son, Solomon. So David, the first king of Israel, was Saul. And then he, God took him out and put David there. So Saul was in charge of the, the 12 tribes plus the Levites. Then there was David, the 12 tribes plus the Levites. Then David left and Solomon took over. And then there was the 12 tribes plus the Levites. So, so 13, if you want to call it the 13. So let's call it 13 for now, uh, going forward. Okay, so there were th now 13. Then something happened when Solomon died. When Solomon died, his son Rehoboam became king after him. So when he became king, the elders of the land came to King Rehoboam and said to King Rehoboam, King Rehoboam, your father Solomon was very hard on us. He made us, you see, Solomon had all these many women. He had to take care of them. He was building the, 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 the temple. He was building the palace. He, he did a lot of infrastructure that he needed a lot of people and money and resources to do. And so he put a huge burden on the people. So when Rehoboam took over from his father Solomon, the people went to Rehoboam and said to Rehoboam, please, your daddy was mean. Your daddy made us suffer. So you come down a little bit. So he went to his father's uh, advisors and they told him, yes, it's true. Your father really did a lot and he put a lot of burden on the people. So relax it. Bring it down a little bit. Bring it down a notch. That way your people will feel less burdened. Then King Rehoboam says, thank you. Then he went to his friends. And when he went to his friends, he asked his friends, what do you think? Then his friends told him, if you do that, the people will ride over you. So tell them, go and tell them that you are going to be even harder than your father. You're going to be even meaner than your father. You're going to make them work harder than your father. And that was the advice Rehoboam took. And when he went and he told the elders of the land that, the elders revolted. He said, then we are not going to be under you. And they broke away. And when they broke away, they were the 10 tribes. They broke away and became their own nation of Israel. So now King Rehoboam was left with only the two other tribes left. His own tribe, and he was the, from the tribe of Judah. So his own tribe, Judah, and the tribe, uh, Benjamin. So the, the, whenever you read the Bible and you get to, oh, the king of Israel, king of Judah, king of Israel, king of Judah, king of Israel, king, you go to Judges, you, you find that trending. You, now you understand that the king of Israel was in charge of the ten nations that broke away. And the king of Judah was actually in charge of only Judah and Benjamin. So those were the only two. Okay, so now let's come back to our original story. Now, original story is that of Ahab and Jehoshaphat. Ahab was the king of the ten tribes of Israel. After they broke away, he got into his turn and now he was the king. And Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah and Benjamin. So Jehoshaphat, realizing that he was a smaller nation, tried to build a relationship with King Ahab. So he went to visit King Ahab. 
And when he went to visit King Ahab, Ahab threw a huge party for him. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter, Second Chronicles chapter eighteen, and verse. Um, Chronicles eighteen. All right. So, verse two. He says, "Many years later, Jehoshaphat went down to see Ahab in Samaria." Ahab slaughtered many sheep and cattle for him and the people who were with him and urged him to join him to go and attack Ramoth Gilead. Ahab wanted to go and attack Ramoth Gilead. And since Jehoshaphat had come to visit, he asked for Jehoshaphat's help. He says, bring your army, come join my army and let's go fight the people of Ramoth Gilead. Hallelujah. Verse 3. King Ahab, king of Israel, asked Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, will you go with me against Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied, I, I am as you are. My people are your people and we will join you in the war. Brethren, that's the kind of friend you and I need. We need one who will come to our aid in our time of crisis. You will need somebody who will come and support you in your time of trouble. You need somebody who will be your support in your time of need. A friend in your time of need is a friend indeed. So when we say a friend in need is a friend indeed, we mean a friend in your time of need. Is a friend indeed. Anybody who will be your friend when you need him, he will come to your aid when you need him, he will come and support you when you need him, is a good friend. So Jehoshaphat proved that he was a good friend. So he says, yes, I will go with you and I'll go and we'll fight. Then Jehoshaphat does something else. He gives his friend good advice. So verse 4, he says, Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, First, let us seek the counsel of the Lord. So before we go to this war, let us seek the counsel of the Lord. Oh, brethren, if you have a good friend who will give you advice, who will tell you, lead you in the ways of the Lord, who will tell you, let's seek the face of God. Let's go and serve God. Let's do this. Let's do something for God. That's a good friend. That's a friend to have. The friend who will tell you, let's go this way. Let's go and do that. Let's go rob. Let's go kill. Let's go stab. Let's go party and let's go kill. That's not a friend in your time of need. Amen. So the, the, the King Ahab calls, sends for prophets. Verse 5. So the king of Israel brought together the prophets, 400 prophets, and asked them, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead? Or shall we not? And they all answered. All the 400 men. They all answered and they said, God will give it into the king's hands. They didn't pray. They didn't go and seek the face of God. They didn't go and do anything. They just came. He asked them the question. They answered. Oh, go, go, go. As for this war, go. God will give you victory over Ramoth Gilead. But Jehoshaphat noticed that. Something was wrong with the way they just gave the advice. So Jehoshaphat says in verse 6, he says, Then Jehoshaphat asks, Is there no longer a prophet of the Lord here whom we can inquire of? You want to tell me that all these 400 men, they are just sitting here and they are all, you just ask them a question, they all gave you the answer. Is there no prophet of the Lord here? See, when, even when the, 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 the country divided into two, between the Israel and Judah, the Levites, because they had no uh, land, they stole. Some is, uh, prophets ended up on the Israel side, some prophets ended up on the Ju uh, Judah side. So Jehoshaphat had come to know that the prophets of the Lord, if they were the vessels of God, know the voice of God. So he asked the king, you brought 400 men and they all just gave you this advice. Is there no other prophet we can consult? Now listen to what the king of Israel said. The king, verse 7. Uh, 2 Chronicles 18 and verse 7. He says, The king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat, There is still one prophet through whom we can inquire of the Lord. 
See, they didn't invite him. But I hate him. I hate him because he never prophesies anything good about me. It's always bad. He is Micaiah, son of Enlan. The king should not say such a thing. Jehoshaphat replied the king. Jehoshaphat is still being good. says, king, don't say that. Don't say that just because the prophet never prophesies anything good about you. You hate him. That's not right. He's still a prophet of God. If God wants him to say it, he will say it. But if he's not saying it, then there is something wrong. So the king calls, says one of the officials, go and bring Micaiah. Hallelujah. And whilst the king, was, uh, the messenger was gone, verse 10, Zedekiah, king, a son of Canaan, had made iron horns and he declared this. This is what the Lord says. So another prophet amongst the 400 is now telling the king of Israel and Judah. He says, this is what the Lord says. See, sometimes we have prophets who, who, who say this is what the Lord says and it's not from the Lord. And Lord, and that's what we call the false prophets. The ones who say, but it's not the Lord telling them to say. And they always make God look bad when what they say doesn't come true. Let us beware of false prophets. You know, beware of those who tell you it is and it is not. They tell you, that say the Lord. Just because they use that say the Lord, they make you think that it is so. It is not. The Lord hasn't said anything to them, but they are listening. They still tell you. So be careful of the people you hang around with. Anyway, so Zedekiah says, verse 10, says, this is what the Lord says, that the, with these horns, you will go the Arameans until they are destroyed. So you see, he's also adding to their thing that there will be victory. God says, I should tell you there will be victory. Hallelujah. So all the prophets are prophesying the wrong thing. So the messenger gets to Micaiah. And he tells this messenger, tells Micaiah, the Micaiah, all the other 400 prophets are prophesying that the, 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 the uh, king, when he goes to this war, will be victorious. Please, when you go, also go and confirm that. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, verse 12, says, look, the other prophets, without exception, none of them, are all predicting success for the king. Let your word agree with theirs and speak favorably to the king. So this messenger is, is kind of giving Micaiah hint that when you go, you to go and say that the king will be victorious because all the other 400, including Zedekiah, are all prophesying that the king will be victorious. Then Micaiah says this, As surely as the Lord lives, I can tell you only what God tells me to say. So as long as God lives, if God hasn't told me to say it, I won't say it. And if God says me to say it, that's all I'm saying. So they arrive. Verse 14, they arrive and the king asked Micaiah, Shall we go to war against Ramad Gilead? Or shall we not? Hallelujah. And then the king says, How many times must I make you answer to tell me nothing but the truth in the Lord? Tell me the truth. Every time I ask you something, you don't want to, you don't want to tell me what it is. Then Micaiah says, I saw all Israel scattered on a hill like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord says, These people have no master. Let each of them go home in peace. Then the king of Israel says to Jehoshaphat, didn't I tell you? You see, he turns to Jehoshaphat and says, Jehoshaphat, I, didn't I tell you? This man never prophesies anything good in my life. He, look at the prophecy he's giving. He's giving that the people, he saw sheep and all the sheep had no master. So that means that me, uh, me who's the king of the people, I won't be there. So you see, he's prophesying that something bad is going to happen to me. I told you this prophet is a bad prophet. He never prophesies anything good. 
See, sometimes when people tell us the truth, we think that they are rather the ones who are doing harm. We want the sycophant who will tell us that, oh, everything is rosy. Oh, you are the best. Oh, you are the nicest. Oh, you know how to do it best. Oh, yeah. That's what we want to hear. Oh, if that's what your itching ears want to hear, that is what you will hear. And brethren, trust me, if that is what you are hearing, it won't lead to success for you and victory. Sometimes you got to hear the hard truth. Kai told the king the hard truth and he didn't want to hear it. Amen. Then Micaiah said, verse 18 says, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne with all the multitudes of heaven, standing at his right and his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab, king of Israel, into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this and another said. Then finally a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and says, I will entice him. By what means, the Lord asked. I will go and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And you will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. So now the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all the prophets of yours. And the Lord has decreed disaster for you. These people who you are listening to, these 400 prophets that you are listening to, they are not from the Lord. In fact, there is an evil spirit that has, is in, amongst them, enticing them to give you the wrong information so that you will take the wrong step. They are snakes. They are green snakes on the green grass. And you don't see it. They are telling you you're going to be successful. Because you want to hear that, you, you want to go. All right, go. Hallelujah. So they went. As soon as he said that, look, look at what happened. Verse 23, Zedekiah, the one who prophesied earlier and said that the, uh, the, the horns will be used to uh, guard the Arameans. He came and he walked up to Micaiah and slapped him in the face like Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. He just gave him a slap right there in front of everybody. And he said this. Which way did the spirit from the Lord go when he went from me to speak to you? Are you telling me that the spirit of the Lord doesn't speak to me? He speaks to you? And so you are saying that this is going to happen when I have prophesied that that's not going to happen? Hallelujah. Then Micaiah said something to him. He says, you will find out on the day you go and hide in an inner room. A day is going to come. This thing will happen as I have prophesied. And if you don't think that what my prophecy is, is true, then a day is going to come when that thing happens, you will go and hide in an inner room. Amen. The king of Israel, Ahab, got upset. Then he ordered that Micaiah be sent to Ammon, the ruler in the city, and Joash, the king's son. Ahab's son was called Joash. He says, take him to Joash and tell Joash that I say that they should put this, this fellow, he won't even call him a prophet, this fellow, call this fellow, put him in prison and give him nothing but bread and water until I return safely from the war. So, he has prophesied that if I go to this war, I will die. Keep him there in that prison until I return. If I don't return, then he's staying in prison. Verse 28. Then the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. So now they are preparing. The two kings are preparing to go to war. Now listen to the snake. Listen to what the snake that green snake and the green grass said to Jehoshaphat, after all that Jehoshaphat had done for King Ahab, look, listen to what King Ahab said to Jehoshaphat. Ready? Verse 29 of 2 Chronicles chapter 18 says, The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will enter the battle in a disguise by you, Jehoshaphat, wear your royal garments and let's go. So the king of Israel, he disguised himself and went into the battle. 
and he told Jehoshaphat, oh, you wear your royal uh, robes. Let's go to the war. But I will disguise myself like an ordinary soldier. That's a friend. The friend who you had just advised is telling you that, oh, go to the war with me. But me, I will go, I'll dress like a soldier. You dress like a king. And go. So they go. Verse 31. And when the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, they thought that must be the king of Israel. See, because the king is with them and he's wearing the royal robe and he's all dressed up in his, uh, in his royal garments and they are going to the battle and he's on the horse like he's the king of the army. Meanwhile, King Ahab has disguised himself like an ordinary soldier. So nobody is looking out for him and they are looking for the king to kill. So they see Jehoshaphat and they say that, oh, that must be the king. So they turned to attack him. They turned. As soon as they saw Jehoshaphat, they thought Jehoshaphat was the king of Israel. They, they turned and they decided to attack Jehoshaphat. But the Bible says, Jehoshaphat cried out to the Lord and the Lord helped him. And God drew them away from him. Jehoshaphat cried unto his Lord. And when the people were coming to attack him, God turned them away from Jehoshaphat. Amen. Verse 33. But someone drew his bow and shot it at random. And it went and hit Ahab, king of Israel, between the breastplate and the scale armor. And the king told the chariot driver, wheel around and get me out of the fighting. I have been wounded. And all day long the battle raged and the king of Israel was propped himself against his chariot facing the Aramean and until evening and by sunset he was dead. He was dead. Brethren, do you have a snake as your friend? Do you have a green snake under green grass as your friend who will cause, who will plan and plot and try to get you in trouble and make sure that you are the one who will die. He wanted to go as a soldier so he wouldn't die. He wanted Jehoshaphat to go as the king so that he would die. The green snake on the green grass. The green snake on the green grass. Many of us have those kinds of friends and those friends create problems for us. They create crisis in our life. They create problems in the situations that we are going through. Then the second story we read was from Acts chapter 13. And in Acts chapter 13, we read about by Jesus. The, the, uh, Paul went to a place and whilst he was there, they got to a town and there was a false prophet there called Bar Jesus. His other name was Elimias. So Elimias, uh, when Paul got there, the, the pro council of the place, the, 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 the head of the, the, or the governor of the place was called Sergius Paulus. Now Sergius heard about Paul. And so when Paul came around, he says, Oh, Paul, I want to hear the word of God from you. Come and give me the message. Amen. And there was Bar Jesus, Elimias, the false prophet. That's how even the Bible describes him. Amen. Acts chapter 13 and verse 6. Paul and Silas traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar Jesus who was a friend of the proconsul Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. He wanted to hear from Paul and Barnabas. Amen. But Elimas, the sorcerer, the false prophet, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul away from hearing the word of God. Some friends. He said his friend is the pro council. The friend wants to hear the word of God. And Elimas, by Jesus, is telling him, no, uh, no, don't go listen to them. 
Don't listen to that. Brethren, sometimes the friends we have are the ones who are leading us astray from the word of God. And they are the ones who are leading us astray from serving God. They are the friends who are causing havoc in our spiritual life, in our church life. In our prayer life, in our Bible study life, they are the ones leading us astray. They are giving us wrong information. What kind of friend do you have? Is it the one that will lead you to the Lord? Or is it the one that will drive you away from the Lord? Amen. Verse 9. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at the lemas and said, You, you are lemas, you by Jesus. You are a child of the devil. And an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of God? And now the hand of the Lord is against you, Elemas. You are going to be blind for a time and not even able to see the light of the sun. Immediately, 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 a mist. And darkness came over Elimas, and he started groping around, seeking someone to, to, to lead him by the hand. And when the proconsul saw this, he believed, and he was amazed at the teaching of the Lord. What kind of friend do you have? Do you have a friend, or do you have a green snake under green grass? So let's go back to Rehoboam. There are other versions of, of other uh, people who had bad friends, who gave them bad advice, who, gave, who convinced them to take the wrong step, and they ended up in crisis. See, Rehoboam listened, didn't listen to the advices of his father, Solomon. He listened to his friends, and his friends gave him bad advice, and his nation of 12 nation, uh, tribes was divided. He lost 10. He was left with only two because he listened to bad advice because he had bad friends because he had snakes as his friends samson had a friend called delilah they were lovers delilah was a philistine samson an israelite well he falls in love with the philistine so there's no big deal about that even though god had told him do not be unequally yoked with them he had fallen in love now, the Philistines came to Delilah and said to Delilah, he tried and convinced him, he's too strong, we can't do anything to him, but we need to find where his strength is, try and get it for us. And so Delilah, who was faking to be a good friend of Samson, being a good lover and trying to show that, oh, I love you, I care for you, started asking Samson for the information that he would pass on to the Philistine. So Samson lied the first time. They tried it, it didn't work. He lied the second time. They tried it, it didn't work. So finally Samson relented. And Samson told Delilah the truth that my powers are in my hair because I am a Nazarite. And the lady cut off her, his hair whilst he was asleep with his head on her lap. And when he woke up, his powers were gone. A snake, a green snake on the green grass was his lover. And he didn't even know it. What kind of friend do you have? What kind of friend are you? Are you the green snake on the green grass to somebody? Do you have a green snake as a, on the green grass in your life? Brethren, Matthew 5 verse 7. Matthew and verse 5, verse 7, says something. It says, says, Blessed are the merciful, so for they will be shown mercy. Now when we go, so be merciful to others. Be merciful. Show everybody kindness. Show love. Be the kind of friend that will help your, 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 your friend to be successful. Like Jehoshaphat. He wanted his friend to be successful. You want to go to war? I'll go with you. But seek the face of God. And you want me to wear my robe whilst you disguise? Sure, I would do it. I want to be that kind of friend. But you and I need that kind of friend in our life. But don't have the friend that will tell you that, oh, you take go with me. But you go as the king so that they can kill you. Verse 30 says, if your right hand causes you to stumble, 
cut it off and throw it away. For it is better for you to lose one part of your body than to lose your whole body and go to hell. So, brethren, my message to you is look for the green snakes on the green grass in your life and cut them off. Cut them off. Eliminate them from your life. It is better not to have a green snake as a friend than to have them create the kind of habit I have tried to create. Delilah tried to create. Friends of Rehoboam tried to create in the life of the people they thought were their friends. What kind of friend do you have? What kind of friend are you? Do you have a snake as a friend? Do you have a green snake on the green grass as a friend. Are you a snake under grass? Are you a green snake under green grass? Let us all be the kind of friends that will be useful, that will be helpful, that will be there for the friends we need. And may we eliminate anyone who will prove not to be a trustworthy friend, not to be a good friend. May we eliminate them from our life. Father, Help us to eliminate all the green snakes in our life. And may you help us, if we are green snakes, may you help us to turn our life around so that we'll become the kind of friends we need to be for our friends. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, 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 God bless you.